Hi, welcome to a2zknowledge.com. So today we are going to discuss about the word count program in Apache Spark. So before getting into this video, if you want to have uh, means if you want to see all my big data related videos, I have shared all the playlist link in the description box. Please have a look and I have shared my LinkedIn and Instagram URL in the description box in case if you want to follow or if you want to contact me, you can do via that. So uh, uh, if people are very new to this big data field, I, I just wanted to tell you one thing. So uh, uh, in in Spark or in Hadoop or even in any other technologies in big data, the very first program people will use to go ahead is word count. It's similar to how we use Hello World in other programming languages. So similar to that, people used to go with this word count program. So uh, today I'm going to show you how to do this with Scala in Apache Spark. So the same way you can go ahead and do with Python and Java as well. So, um, so I, I just have the program here and then I do have the input file as well. So here the input file is in local that is in Linux, but not in HDFS. So in my upcoming video, I'll show you how to read the data from HDFS also and process in Spark. Okay, so uh, here in Spark, I'm going to show you this in Spark shell, which is actually Scala. Spark supports two shell, Spark shell, which is Scala, and then there is PySpark. So you can do with shell python and shell but for java we don't have shell here for java you have to go with ides like eclipse or intellij you have to do a setup and then only you can able to uh, run the program so in my upcoming video i'll show you like how to uh, set up eclipse or intellij with spark uh, dependencies how to set up an id for spark and then how to build a jar file and submit in the cluster mode so this now i'm going to show you in in spark shell but not in the cluster mode i'll just start the spark shell so i i will i'm not going to start spark service also so just for your practice it's not mandatory that you have to start the spark service the demons master and worker it's it's enough to just start only the spark shell or by spark okay so let me start the spark shell so uh, when you when you start Spark, not Spark Shell, when you start Spark, the service, the master worker, you will be having an UI, right? So we, we do have a UI localhost 8080. So now my Spark service are running, master and worker is running. So this UI is actually the cluster mode web UI where you can monitor the list of workers and the list of application which is running. But anything that you run in Spark Shell, you will not able to see in this UI okay for if you want to see uh, whatever the program that you run in spark shell and if you want to monitor that you have a separate ui for spark shell which is actually localhost which actually runs on localhost 4040 okay okay let me see whether my spark shell okay i haven't started the spark shell okay let me start the spark shell so then you can able to see uh, the spark shell uh, the web ui for spark shell it's getting started So uh, you can ask me like what is the difference between this web UI and this web UI content wise these two web UIs will show you the same thing like how many applications and how many tasks are running and everything will be the same the common one the only different is so this is for shell the separate web UI has been built for shell and that is for your cluster mode. Okay let us wait for the spark shell to get start okay so the spark shell has been started and so that uh, you will get the spark shell ui now so and one more thing uh, like uh, once the spark shell is started like you can you can just like that whatever the code that you with that you type inside spark shell is actually scala and for python there is a separate py shell uh, let me show you the code in the meantime uh, like we don't want to wait for the ui let me go ahead and explain you the code and then we can see the ui so this is the code and you can see it's just two lines of code so this is one line and i do have another line here and that's all and this is my input file which is in my local so hi welcome to my channel 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 is two times and then a to z knowledge now if you see here so uh, in general uh, spark and hadoop are like it, it, it process the data in parallel so if you take uh, the parallel any parallelism technology we call it as mpp massive parallel processing technology if you go for any 
parallel processing technology there is two things you have to do first you have to you have to process the data in parallel and finally you have to bring it to one place so that means grouping so we call it as whatever the parallelism task that you are running is called map and then at last when you do grouping we call it as reduce it's a general term so when I use the map and reduce in spark don't think this is map reduce in Hadoop okay so it's a general term even in map reduce first we call we do parallelism with map and finally we group it and we call that as reduce right the same thing so the the same analogy the the words we are using the same words the terms we are using uh, but it's it's actually spark it's not your uh, map reduce what you see in hadoop okay like the word is same i'm just using it so now like uh, you can see where so uh, as i told you already in my previous video spark introduction video so you need the prerequisite you need to know scala or java or python or any programming language the basics will help you to understand the coding what you do in your spark so where and val there are two types of keywords which we use to declare a variable with the keyword where or val so where is a keyword which we use to uh, um, uh, which we use uh, in the in the spark uh, declaring in front of the uh, variable and val is also we used in front of uh, variable so var and val it's it's just a, it's like a, a keyword what you use static and final in your uh, java so similar to that so var is something immutable and the where uh, immutable is sorry var is mutable that means you can able to chain the value throughout your program and if you assign it as a val it's immutable that means you can't chain the value it's similar to final keyword in the java okay so you can use anything for now so val a sc okay what is sc here okay so let me show you one more thing we started the spark shell right and you can able to see here spark context is available as sc so spark context is like an entry point for the spark compiler to start uh, processing your code so in normal in programming languages we do have main method right so similar to that here we used to have this sc spark context so since the spark shell you are you are starting spark shell the spark shell itself will initialize and create the spark context for you as a, as a name in the name as sc but if you are uh, writing the same code in id is like eclipse or intelligy you have to create spark context for your program okay but as i told you i will show you in the upcoming videos fine back to the code so i'm reading the file which is in my local and then i'm doing a flat map uh, transformation on top of uh, the word what I have so it means the file what I have so if you see here I'm writing some kind of an inline function so flat map so what is flat map so if I am giving string to a flat map Gautam so that's my name so I'm giving Gautam string as an input for flat map the output will be G comma O comma W comma T comma H comma A comma M so it's it's it just split the words okay so here flat map is a function which will flatten your data so for inside this i'm just writing in function line uh, uh, dot split by uh, space so the delimiter in my input file is space so first i have to process this uh, uh, words right so which i have to do it in parallel and finally the count should happen in the grouping part so the process in the sense like i have to check for i have to fetch the word burst based on the delimiter which is space so that means my final output will be like high space welcome space to space um, my channel channel a to z knowledge now then i'm just passing that output to my map transformation so in map transformation i'm splitting i'm, I'm, I'm creating a key value pair so word is something the input uh, the, the words and one I'm just hard coding one with all the word because at least uh, the word will be have will be in one occurrence right at least one will be there so one occurrence will be there so I'm just hard coding one so the output of this particular line will be hi one welcome one two one my one channel one channel one because I'm not doing any kind of grouping here so still you will be seeing the duplicates and then one will be hard coded to hard coded to it and finally comes to the grouping part I'm, I'm i'm just doing some kind of a shuffle operation a grouping operation called reduce by key so this reduce by key what it will do it will first uh, take the key and then it will check for the value so it will first take high and then zero it, it it will it will start with zero so zero plus one so that means one this one the value so zero plus one is equal to one again and then it will take welcome so then it will do like uh, uh, it will check for is there any other repeated word no so then it will take welcome and then one so it, it will do zero plus one again and then two my everything same but when it comes to channel what it will do first it will check for for every word it will check for the duplicates so if you see here it, it checks that there is a two occurrence of channel so it will group those two words and then 
it will group only the key it's very important uh, the reduce by key function it's it's it, it's only will do the grouping and sorting based on the key but not on the value so still if you see the value has not yet grouped instead the value has been stored as a list so the channel has been grouped as one word and then one comma one so the it it, it gets stored in the list now this reduce by key will take this channel and then it will iterate this values so it will start like 0 plus 1 1 there is one more one again 1 plus 1 2 that's all the list the list is empty now so it will it will give the answer as 2 and then it will go go ahead with the next key and then again it will start with 0 plus whatever the value you have given okay so if you run this you will be getting the final output so let me run this code in the spark shell okay so if you see in spark we used to call spark as lazy evaluation that means your transformation will get start only when there is an action in your code so uh, that is we call lazy evaluation which is bottom to top approach spark uh, programs whatever the apis and syntax what, what you are writing has been split into two major thing transformation action transformation is something you do all type of any transformations if you see in our code we use like text file flat map map reduce by key all these are transformations and finally i have to perform some action and then only like i can able to something like you have you can save it to a file or you can you can show the output you can print the output you can collect it so we do have some keywords for actions as well so only when there is an action spark will start compiling the code okay that is a lazy evaluation and it's an added advantage in spark actually okay let me see why my spark shell is not getting started Okay, so it says 4043. Okay, so because I can able to see here, uh, it's tried with like 4040 and then it's, it's it, it couldn't bind it. So it just created the Spark uh, UA in the port number as 4043. So you can see the UA is named as Spark shell. So anything that you run in shell, you can able to see those applications you can monitor here. So I have executed the very first line of the code, but I'd, I'm not seeing anything here. The reason, as I told you, it's a bottom to top approach until there is an action. Like once you perform an action and then only you can see all the uh, uh, progress here. So what is the next line? Uh, it, it is the reduce by key. Okay. So even now, if I refresh uh, the page, I will I will not see anything because this reduce by key is again a transformation. Now finally, this B dot collect is an action. It will just uh, show you the output here. So collect is actually an action. Now the transformation will start. The processing will get start. Once the collect, when you execute this collect, then the map transformation and reduce by transformation, everything will be get started. So if you see here, welcome one, my one, a to z knowledge is one, hi one, two one, and channel is two times. So this is the final output. So now if I refresh my web page, I can able to see yeah, you can see the collect action if and the four task has been created and four task has completed and you can click this. So you will be seeing the direct acyclic graph visualization. It will show you the stages of the code, but these are something I'm not going to cover now. What the stages and how to uh, visualize this DAG and those stuff I will explain you in the upcoming videos. And thanks for watching a2zknowledge.com. Please do subscribe to my channel if you really like this video. And please do share this in your LinkedIn if possible. And I have shared all my contact details in the description box and the complete playlist, uh, big data playlist link in the description box. Please have a look. Thanks for watching a2zknowledge.com. We do a lot of tech videos in two languages, English and Tamil.